You know what's f***ed up? Making us work five days out of seven days a week to still be f***ing broke and still not being able to afford anything. The cost of living nowadays is genuinely ridiculous. Ridiculous. And it just makes you wonder, why am I working all these days, all these hours, and still struggling? It's honestly sad, but like, <sighs> what can you do about it, you know? I'm not married, and I don't have kids. So quite frankly, I should be having more money in my pocket, you know? I'm just providing for myself. Drop country recommendations below. I officially can't afford to live in Canada anymore. So I want to get the hell out of here. Please comment below where I should try and visit or where I should move to. Because I can't do this anymore. I hate I'm honestly so upset. Living in America is freaking ridiculous right now. There are people choosing whether they want to have Christmas gifts or pay their rent. And that might not be different from any other year. Two to three grand on average. You need to make two to three times that. Nine thousand a month. How many people with regular bachelor degrees are even making that? No one. Not a lot of people. No one wants to live with roommates. That's not the answer. Everybody deserves a safe and clean space. There's no reason why so many people should be roommating or you can't even buy yourself your own house. It's just, it's not, this is horrible. She can't afford to buy a home in the township she leads. In earning around $90,000 a year, she can't afford a home in the municipality she leads. Living in this region is really not attainable for a young professional who has university debt, and I know I'm certainly not alone in that. She says many of her own friends in their late 20s are unable to afford homes in Wilmot, too. I live in my car because the cost of living in America is just too high. Uh, so I get questions like this, like, what am I going to do if my car busts? Which I feel like is a weird way of phrasing that. Um, but if my car does break down, um, I'll just get it fixed. And if it's a repair that costs more than $1,000, then I am just going to get rid of the car and then move to Europe and start a new life there. I'm not lying in bed all day because I'm depressed. I'm lying in bed all day because I'm broke and I can't afford to do anything else. Let me tell y'all something. If you were thinking about coming to the South to escape um, insane rental prices, uh, you'd be wrong. You would be absolutely wrong because they're gonna pay you less down here. They're gonna pay you less and your rent is going to be $2,000. You can't even find an apartment for less than $2,000 uptown. My apartment complex is charging $1,700 for a studio. No door. You are paying $1,700 for a studio. No door. My apartment complex for a one bedroom right now, $2,000 easy two thousand dollars easy so what do you think a two-bedroom is don't come down here there is not a single state city or county where a worker can afford a two-bedroom rental at minimum wage these are the updated stats for 2023 and even if we raise the wage to 15 dollars an hour you still wouldn't be able to afford a two-bedroom rental home and I'm sick and tired of seeing comments saying that a minimum wage was never supposed to be a living wage. Like, you don't know what you're talking about, bro, because FDR literally created it for that very reason. And it's not just minimum wage workers. 60% of wage earners can't afford a two-bedroom rental. Does that sound like a sustainable system to y'all? You know, I was just sitting back the other day and thinking to myself, like, damn, man, I'm, I'm thankful for where I'm at currently in my life. Because to think about where I was at, I mean, even a year ago, I, you know, I still consider myself like a, a newbie, like a baby when it comes to this YouTube game. I just, you know, passed my one year anniversary in June and it's only freaking October right now. So I'm still very much a, a newbie. Um, but I was just thinking back the other day, like, damn, and I'm just so thankful for obviously the opportunity that I've been able to have by, you know, providing you guys with this type of content and, and speaking to everybody. But I also thought to myself, like, damn, man, imagine where I would be if I didn't have this, you know? And, you know, what I was doing before this, it wasn't bad. Like, I, I told I, you guys know I worked in education. I became a personal trainer. I opened up my own business. I've, I've talked about these things before as far as on this channel at, at times. 
And um, I was making decent money as a personal trainer. I had hit the six figure mark, you know, where I was, you know, making, you know, I was working hard. Don't get me wrong. I, I was working 60 plus hours easily every week, but I was pulling it in as far as things go. And even then, you know, I was always making sure that I live conservatively. I was always making sure I save my money, pay off, you know, old debts and things of that nature. And, and thinking back to where I was at at that time and just even though I was living, even, you know, where I was living at, where, you know, where me and my wife was living at at that time, we were downsizing, living in like a basement apartment and everything. And just we were doing everything in our power to try and save money and like just keep our lifestyle limited. And just the amount of stress that, you know, I was dealing with and that came along with that as we're trying to, you know, do what we need to do in order to like to, to change our circumstances. And all I can think to myself today is the fact that, damn, like I don't have that same amount of stress because thankfully I'm doing much better. But how many of you out there have that stress? I mean, it's a, I know it's a lot of people out there who have that type of stress every single day and are trying to figure out ways to make shit work for you because it's rough. It's rough when you're going to a grocery store and you're buying three, four or five items and your bill comes up to $100. And now don't get me wrong. There's two sides to this entire situation that we have here. We do have people who have no clue on how to budget. We do have people who are reckless with their spending, who are not prioritizing what is important and how they should be spending the money they are bringing in. They're trying to live far above their means. That does exist. They're living in a home they can't afford. They're trying to live a lifestyle they can't afford. They're trying to be able to purchase goods and services that they can't afford. But, but, but two things can be true at the same time. And we can't deny the fact that the cost of living has just increased exponentially over these past few years where rent prices are being hiked up and most Americans aren't even going to be able to own their own home. And this is why I just don't understand how some people out here just being so reckless with who they have kids with. And having kids just before they are financially in a position to even be able to take care of a kid. I mean, if you're barely able to take care of yourself and you're struggling and then you have to introduce taking care of a whole nother person who can't do for themselves, you're automatically putting yourself in a position where you're constantly going to be struggling, constantly be trying to figure out like how to catch up. And one thing about me is I've always been a very methodical and just aware person as far as like what I want my life to look like. And that's probably the main reason why I just never had kids, especially when I was young. Now that I'm older and in a better position, I can see things through a different lens, but I just don't understand how people out here who are struggling, barely making it, but yet they're having children. Yet you have women out here who are having children with men who can't afford to take care of themselves, but you're expecting that man to come along and do what? Take care of you and take care of a kid? If everybody's being honest with themselves, neither of them are in a, in a position to be able to really do anything to help each other out, let alone do what they need to do for a child. I mean, even with minimum wage, originally minimum wage was meant to help stabilize the economy coming out of the depression as a way to help workers in the labor force and be able to provide those workers with a minimum standard level of income. That way they could at least live a somewhat decent life, not a luxurious life, not a life where you're going to be able to splurge, but just decent. And, you know, Minimum wage doesn't even do that nowadays. I mean, how many people are living paycheck to paycheck? And that's not really like a new phenomenon as far as things go. People have been doing that for a long time. But, I mean, it just seems like it's just something different about it right now to the point where, I mean, listen, I grew up in a two-parent household with my mother and father. And my pops had to hold down two jobs, sometimes three. And my mother worked. And, you know, so we were far from living a, like the Cosbys. But really, how is it out there where you are at? Because the struggle's real. <laughs> I know that social media will have you believe in one thing because everybody wants to present a certain image as if life is okay and that everybody's making six figures and driving in Ferraris and, and everything of that nature. But that could be further from the truth. There's it's plenty of people struggling, plenty of people who are stressed out and trying to figure out you know, what they're going to do next because they don't have a plan. They, they, they're lost. They don't know what to do or or they whatever they try just isn't working and it's getting to a boiling point that something got to change something got to something's going to give something's going to give something's going to break and when that time comes man I hope that you guys are ready for it I hope that you got 
I hope that you're ready for it. I hope you're protecting yourselves, and I hope you, that you're protecting your families. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Appreciate you guys chiming again to support the channel. As always, don't forget, hit the like and subscribe button for more content. And as always, until next time.